Somebody give me a thumbs up. Minus anybody. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Hello, hello, hello. Can anybody hear me? Oh, how do I even tell if anybody's there? I think I say one person. Probably my daughter. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, um, just a quick update. <laughs> um, well, like, I guess I can always go back and edit this video, I guess. Hopefully. Anyways. Yeah. So, I was definitely frauded. Definitely, definitely frauded. Um, definitely. You know, I sent a message to... You know, I did a, a, a video to President Ruto. I'm sure you didn't see it or have other things on their minds, but I was definitely, definitely frauded. I won't tell you how much money I lost. Um, my wife is very upset. Somebody that I trusted. Now I'm in the process of trying to get my money back. So let's see what happens. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's still a very delicate situation. And all of this because you're trying to do things the right way. And the right way just doesn't exist. I, I know I see Kenyans coming to tell me, oh, get a lawyer and so on. Yo, some of these lawyers are, yeah, I'm telling you, man. You know, I had somebody, I saw somebody leave a message somewhere. And so I, I DM them and I said, yo, keep the faith. Don't give up because this person is even further along in the process than I am way further along. And if they can be at the point where they are willing to give up, you must know what they're going through. I just don't understand the reluctance of letting us come home. I don't understand it. We are Africans. Maybe we're about 400 years removed, but we're Africans. No other race got through this, you know. No other race got through this. Anyways, um, as I said, Kenya is still my first love, my first African love. And I'm not giving up. I'm not, I haven't given up yet. But as a business person, sometimes you have to pivot, right? So I did this little thing here. I don't know if it's, if you guys can read it or not. Um, we'll see what the, what the results hold. Because if it says anything about Sierra Leone, you better believe I'm going to do the African ancestry one after that. And go get a passport because sometimes you have to go where you want it, you know. You have to go where somebody will accept you and not where you necessarily want to go. Because Kenya is proving to be exceptionally difficult. And um, some people might say to me, Oh, you need to be on the ground. I'm talking to people on the ground, Americans who are on the ground who are going through the same level of. It's called doggery, as I am. And it's not just Kenya. I, I think all the African countries, I don't know if there was a concerted effort to make some kind of laws to keep us separated. Because other people can go there quite easily. But I think wherever we are in the world, we're at a disadvantage. We, we, we have less than others and it's definitely by design so when somebody's asking for five hundred thousand dollars or a passport or hundred fifty thousand dollars or a passport which is a legal process how many how many how many of us africans in the diaspora are going to be able to take up that kind of money and pay somebody to get a passport yet still canada right now has a visa process called owner operator visa with no preset financial requirement. There is a financial requirement, but it's not preset. So it's each, each is based on its merit. 
So that's sort of, that's for taking people from somewhere else to come to Canada and develop Canada or to run businesses in Canada. But we Africans who want to go back home are made to jump through hoops. We're, we're put through the same process as multinational corporations. It's not fair. Because we cannot compete. We cannot compete like that. Some people are saying, oh, um, you guys need to form a group and come together. And I'm like, that's all crap. You know why it's all crap? Because there have been groups formed throughout the last 30, 40 years and still nothing. So I see a lot of African leaders out there. Oh, yeah, the, the, the six region need to organize. Like, organize and do what? Is there a six, six region bank that's going to be insured by some country in the six region and we all put our money together and then what, what, we're going to get um, African Union citizenship? It's not going to work that way. At least I don't think it's going to work that way. And so it is, it is beyond me that it's so hard for us to go back home. So if my DNA comes back and says I have... Um, anything from Sierra Leone, you better believe I'm going to go get that passport and I'll make very good use of it. I am um, my father's, hello, hello, Jamaican and Zambia, big up, big up yourself. My father's sister, my auntie did her DNA test and um, it came back, um, Benin and Togo, came back as Benin and Togo. Um, some Nigeria, some Ghana, but that was from my father. So, um, and that was from my father's side of the family. So I did one for me and we'll see what happens. And as I said, if it has anything for Sierra Leone in there, you better believe I'm going to go get that passport because it shouldn't be this hard. And it's not like I'm coming or we're coming here to sit down and it's not like there are any social benefits that we're coming to take advantage of. No, we're all coming here to create something. We're all of a particular mindset. I don't, I hope somebody, if somebody can explain to me as why is it this hard? You need 50,000 US dollars and you can get a green card to go to the States. 50,000 to open a business. It doesn't even have to be in an American bank account because they're not issuing you nothing until they have vetted you before you come into the country. Ghana wants you to come into Ghana and then apply for the right of abode. Why can't I apply at a, at, a, at a Ghanaian embassy, a Ghanaian high commission somewhere else in the world. Why can't I do it there? And I tell you, there, there, it, it just seems like there's like this, this, this planned concerted effort to keep us separated. But they're bright, they're bright sparks. You know, today someone sent me um, a video of this school in Kenya. And the teachers were like drilling the kids to say that they're proud of their skin complexion. They're proud of, they, they didn't even say they're proud Kenyans. They go, we're proud Africans. And I was like, yes. So there is work happening, you know, there is work happening. And this is why every so often, no matter how, no matter how depressed you get and how down you get, something will kind of edge you on to say, you know what, keep going because someone else is doing something. Just like how I was the inspiration for this other person to say, listen, Family member, don't give up. You already put too much effort into this. People are depending on you. Don't give up. And so somebody sent something to me and I got it, some inspiration. Because sometimes I'm telling you, sometimes it's hard to keep momentum when it's you that it's you you're following you're yourself. Hard to keep momentum sometimes. Yeah, so that's the, that. I just come to tell you guys, I did a DNA test. Um, I will... Clearly, as soon as I get the results, as soon as I know, you all will know. As soon as I get the results, you'll know. And um, we're, we're, I'm heading back to Africa fairly soon. This time, my wife is going with me. And um, she's going to really see, can she, can she live there? Can she survive there? So this is really the test, you know. Um, we'll be looking at schools when I'm there. Um, because clear, we have kids. We have young kids. So that's a big part of it. She wants to look at schools because we're not looking for international schools. A, a I can't afford it. B, that's not the kind of experience I want them to have necessarily. I'd, I'd rather them have something more cultural. I want them immersed. 
I want them to be Kenyans, basically. So um, we're going to be looking for schools for them. Uh, we're going to go visit the different properties that we have there. And um, hopefully I'll be looking for a location in in Nakuru for my business. My, my main business, my passion business will be in Nakuru County for several reasons. Um, and of course, an outlet in Nairobi because Nairobi have the population. So that's what I'm, I'm still working towards it. I'm still working night and day. Um, but you have a nine to five, so everything else have to kind of fit in afterwards. But, you know, it's funny, you know, you will, you will get up, you will be tired and feel sick and get up and go do your nine to five. But if it's something for you, you tend to put it on the back burner. Isn't that funny how our minds are conditioned? That is mine anyways. And I have to kind of talk myself out of that. So listen, whatever you're doing for you, you have to, you have to give the same 100% as you do to the person who's paying you. You have to. Because it's so easy for us sometimes to just say, Chow, because I mean, I do it for Isaiah right now. So I have to do the same. What's the question? Well, when I ask you a question, please ask the question. I'll answer it. I, I, I mean, unless you're asking something deeply personal, I'm going to answer. I, I, I'm typically an open book. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, sometimes it's hard to keep momentum when you're doing stuff for yourself, but you'll get up and go to work in the rain and the snow or whatever, but make you have to do something for yourself. So trying to build up that discipline as well. And this weight loss journey too, that's a whole nother thing. I don't know if anybody is big. I mean, when I'm in Kenya, sometimes you can't even go through the door. Them sometimes they're too big. So God, I got that got to drop too. Got to drop too. And that's a whole nother, whole nother journey. Trust me. But I've had some people on YouTube offering some assistance with that. And, you know, some people write me some program. I might try to follow the eating program and things. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens afterwards with that. Um... Yeah, Africa Rain, feel free to ask the question, man. I, I, I'm not sure um, where you asked it. Oh, um, you say you were told to put your children in American school? Yeah, some people, some people do that. Like... Um, when I was in Jamaica, when I was living in Jamaica, um, I, I said, I come from Waterhouse, ghetto, but I used to perform at this group and some of my friends were expats and they tried the American school because there is an American school in Jamaica. But after a while I realized, you know what? No, let the kids them go to the regular Jamaican school. So people went to like um, George's and um, Campion, St. Andrews. And there was one more downtown. Maybe that was George's, yeah. And I I, I think they, the, well, talking to the parents, it was a better decision than sending them to the international school. So I, I definitely will do the same thing with my kids, is find a local school. Um, it, Clearly, we will do some research on the school, it, you know, because my youngest daughter is very squeamish. The big one, that's about it. The young one, it's funny. She will, she will take up a snake in her hand but if something is dirty, she ain't touching it. So that's a whole nother thing. Um, so definitely we're going to do some research on that because um, I want it to be fluent in Swahili. They, they're already bilingual. They're francophones. Um, but I definitely want them to be fluent in Swahili. So I think that's the best, the best way to, to go about it. So I will definitely put my kids in local school because I want them immersed in the culture. Um, when when they're in university or whatever, if they want to come back to Canada, they can definitely do that. How do you start? How can you start your business in Kenya? What is your business? What's the business you want to start? So first, you have to register your company. You go on the eCitizen um, portal. They have a one-stop shop. One thing, I, I must give Kenya props with that. You can do almost everything. Everything, almost everything online. And you can register your business. And if it's, if it's a business that you have a Kenyan partner, then, you know, you need some back and forth with them. But everything can be done electronically. And you, and you start a business that way. You're a registered company. Now, your company can make 
can make money, but you cannot work for your company. You need a work permit, which is a whole nother issue. So if you have a Kenyan partner, you can your company you can set up your company. Your company can be making money. You just can't work for your company. So you need a lawyer if you're gonna try and do something operating right away. No, somebody told me they're in Kenya right now and they don't have a work permit, but they are doing what's called owner's draw. They had a very good lawyer draft up some papers for them, so they're able to get make money out of it. But hey, I guess there's ways around everything. But um, the it's a B, Google, I think it's BRS Kenya. That's the business registration service Kenya. You sign up for an e-citizen account, and then you can go in and you can register a company. If your company is registered already in the States, Canada, England, wherever you're from, you can even register a foreign company in Kenya. It's all done online, fairly easy. What else? Water, natural. Listen, man, food will make money. Food will make money, definitely. Let me see people that sell big bottles of water and um, 50 bob for you to your day, MP, so you pay them, them gone. Juice, think food will make money. No problem, man. Yeah, so, um, so that's what I have to say about the school. Um, I will, if you, I'm pretty sure, let me see something. I'm not sure how this texting work. Um, let's see if I can find BRS Kenya. I'm going to see if I can find the website address for you and just copy and paste it in the, yeah, it's brs.go.ke. Very easy. And you just sign up. That's it right there. And you sign up and you're, and you're good to go. Anyway, I'm not stay on this thing too long. We'll just come on for letting them know. So I'm going to do a DNA test. Um, I got scammed. Yeah, I got scammed. Lost some money. Um, working on trying to get it back. I... I applied to my work permit the regular way. I'm waiting to see what happens there. And yeah, that's that, That's where I'm at right now, to be very honest. More Jamaicans are on my page. Listen, man, I get the most hate from Jamaicans, eh? Um, that's not true, actually. I get, I get a lot of messages from people who are married to Kenyans. These are Europeans who are married to Kenyans and feel they have some right to tell me something that <laughs> anyways yeah um, but some Jamaicans have said that um, I'm, I'm a sellout and I should go back to Jamaica but I've said it many many times many many times my, my, my parents are in Jamaica my brother is in Jamaica I cannot afford Jamaica I and to be honest, it's not even a matter of money, to be quite honest. I've been to Jamaica, my barn and grow there, and the feeling I got when I was in Kenya, I never got that feeling in Jamaica. So I, I it's not even, I don't think I even want anybody the explanation, but some Jamaicans say I've sold out because Omega Africa. But these are the Jamaicans who really don't understand the connection between Jamaica and Africa. So... You say you're you're Jamaican and you're and you're not leaving America for Jamaica. Yo, I'm afraid America. I don't. I'm not gonna shame for talking. Though. Yo, I'm gonna cross the border and I'm I'm afraid. Listen, man. One minute, one minute there. I'm gonna come here. I went to school. I was going to school here, and my uncle was dating this lady, and she wanted me to drop her to Buffalo to the airport. So I'm it's okay if I'm gonna drop it to the airport. I was gonna drive my car. And I got out my car, and back in them days, I drive my wallet between my legs. So I have a tendency to get up and leave my wallet on the car, my car seat. So I got up out of my car and drove her car. She said she wanted to drive her car. So, okay, fine. So I got up and I drove her car across the border. I don't know how I get across the border without passport, driver's license, anything. I got across the border with nothing. I don't even remember how I got across the border, but I got across. Drop out of the airport. We're at the airport now. Um, police come. I wait for 
take the bags and stuff. The guy come and move, move, myself. I'm just take, she's leaving out the car. I, I drop her out of the car. And um there was like a, a parking tag on the rearview mirror for when like like which part you work, them yeah tags so them no so you're allowed to park there. The guy gave the policeman some have obstructed view and gave me a $350 US ticket. Now I'm an international student. When me I get $350 US for to get this 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 policeman. Man, give me a ticket. The man said, Where your driver's license? Then I go so to I mean, I have no wallet on me. And I, me, I drive the woman car, the woman gone, no, go and catch her flight. I'm me and her out there. Luckily, I mean, I don't know if I look here, I look here. Luckily, I knew, don't want to get too much into that, but I had, a, I had a relationship with a police officer in the city that I lived, and I had his phone number. I'm going to call him and say, Listen, tell this policeman who I am. Where me come from? Why me have your number? And whatever, whatever. So he was talking to the policeman. They were talking to each other. The policeman hung up the phone and said, I don't know who this guy is. I don't, I don't believe you. Here's a ticket. Um, and you have to come back and go to court. Anyway, so me I drive go across the bar. Now. Me not, remember, you know, me not, me not Canadian. I'm not a student visa. I not have my passport. I not have no wallet. Nothing. Luckily again, I go back across them. I said, What I do? I said, I drop somebody to the airport. They wave me through. Those days are done. Everybody get checked now. Those days, me used to go to Detroit and go across the bottom. People don't even check you. No, they check everybody. So I came back. The first thing coming out of me of more court, I never go. I said, I never go back to America. I never go court. The second thing come, I never go. The third one come now, so I never get convicted if I never show up. So I call the court house and say, listen, I tell them, I say, I'm an international student. I, I blah, 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 blah. Them say, no, come to court. So I'm going to drive, go back over, I'm going to go to court. But then in front of the, 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 the prosecutor, tell me if I plead guilty with an explanation. So I don't know nothing, I'm going to plead guilty. So the judge asked me, what really happened? I'm going to tell the judge. The judge said, you mean a little parking sticker to identify where the car is allowed to park? He said, yes. The judge start laughing and said, Pay fifteen dollars and go. <laughs> so luckily, my God, the judge cut down the ticket from children and something dollar to fifteen dollars. So from that day, I am afraid of the states because I did nothing wrong. Me not do nothing. No man just put me over. So me not really, me not really have no love for America. I must say, watch too much TV with Americans, the black people things. Some yeah. So honestly, me me take Jamaica over America. I tell you the truth. It's brs.go.ke. So br brs.go for government, ke for Kenya. Listen, man, Ghana, Ghana, what listen, what, what happened? You know, something happened to me in 2022, and I needed to leave Canada. I'm, I couldn't take it no more. It's like it's like I need to be around the people. I'm, I'm never feel comfortable for Jamaica because. I know my mom, if I tell her I'm come home, I'm stressed out, I appear balling and can't take the drama, you understand? So I said, no, you know what? I'm Africa, I'm going to connect to Africa. I'm just going to connect. Which country I'm going to go? And I randomly pick Kenya. Randomly pick Kenya. Because all along, I watch Woody Maya, I watch Tim Swain, I watch a girl named Denta. Who else I watch? Vanessa Kambi. Um, this Japanese girl, I forget her name. Marinti, I watch pure guy, um, Ghanaian or Ghanaian YouTuber. So really and truly, my mind was set on Ghana. But one mind say, go Kenya. Randomly, almost randomly. And trust me, I tell you, the day I reach at the airport, I mean, the woman look at me and tell me, say, welcome home. Trust me, man. And, 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 and. Me here said them tell almost everybody that still, but me here some people say nobody never tell them welcome home. But I got a and, and my welcome home was like the immigration guy looked on the passport and me said something to him and him said, You have an accent? And me said, Yeah, come have a Canadian passport. I said, Yeah, my Jamaica. And, and him said, Yeah, man, I am man. I welcome. But at the lady, at the customs lady, where she not even check my bag, me and I sat up there chat and she laugh about my name and thing. And, after my walk off, she shout out my name and said, welcome home. I mean, I tell you, man, it's like something, something hit me. And my first night was a disaster in Kenya. I have, um, I think I have videos and pictures of that issue in the Airbnb. That's a whole nother story.
But even that, after that, everything was like perfect. I went to a bar. I was staying at a place named and Bamburi along the Mombasa Kilifi Highway. I think that's what it's called. And when the guy them at the bar here my Jamaicans, these are Kenyans who my dollar is like 10 shillings to one Canadian dollar at the time. These guys were buying me drinks, asking me questions. And may I tell you, the love, the love where you get as a Jamaican. And I, it is not just me. Me know enough Jamaicans go all over Africa and them tell you said the love, the genuine love and affection where you get is unbelievable. So me don't really understand how. Jama some some Jamaicans, not all. Some Jamaicans have a this this negative thing about Africa. I, mean, I don't get it. Cause may I tell you, the love where you, where you're gonna get as a Jamaican and African continent, you're not gonna get that in America. You're not gonna get that in Canada. You're not gonna get that in England. Guaranteed, you're not gonna get that. Yeah, man, them love them love a bad man. Trust me, trust me. So this is I the next thing to me. You just can't. It's, it's like a, it's like a certain camaraderie. I'm, I'm love it. I'm just love the feeling. So that's where I'm heading, and hopefully the wife like it. Hopefully the wife like it, and um, you know we'll go from there and see what can go on. So yeah. But anyways, people, I appreciate the time. A half an hour already. I appreciate the time. Anybody have any questions for me, feel free to ask. I will answer as much as I can. I'm gonna tell you, sir, you know, I'm gonna really much to much to the discomfort of my 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 parents. Well, not my parents, my dad is like really big on this. My dad, my dad has always been pro-black, pro-Africa. Like my name, my brother name even worse. Uh my remember my man got you mama at airport and I'm so where's your brother? I'm so you mean so where's your brother? I'm like, he's home. Where is home? I'm like, my brother is 10 years old. Why are you asking for my brother? But he had a name of somebody else. My dad is a my dad is a joker, may I tell you about yeah, man, very black conscious. My mom is a little bit afraid. So, you know, the minute we talk certain things, car, you know, back in the day, don't tell people when you travel, don't tell this, don't tell that. And I mean, I really believe them something there, but that's my mom. So, you know, you have to listen sometimes. So just but yeah. You know, me and the wife I head out to, to Kenya soon and I'll do some videos and post up and thing once once we're done with there. Yo, yo man, may I tell you, there's a place called um a red ring road, ring road, which apparently is a really bad area in um bad area in Nairobi. And I was walking through there. I didn't remember that I had a Jamaican thing on my shirt. But me I tell him, I may hear people like tap patter to me. I may say, wait. Them know me a Jamaican. I, I after them reach back, my cousin said, but you know, so say I have Jamaican thing by your shirt. I said, oh, but yeah, man, nothing about love, man. Nothing about love. So definitely bring a flag by your put a flag by your jacket or by your shirt and travel Africa, man. You're safe, man. And travel with a Jamaican passport too, if you can. Yeah, man. Listen, listen, man. Anything we can answer, my answer. Um, I don't charge for anything. Um, that's how that's another thing. I, 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 I'm not charging. I'm not begging. Like the only thing we ask for is a signature and the and the petition. I really would appreciate if people share the petition because I, I, I am, I am crossing the border for that one. I'm going to to New York City. I'm going to the African Union um, permanent mission there. Observer mission there, and I'm going to give them the give them the the petition. I called them in 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 Addis because I would have dropped it off in Addis, but nobody answer, nobody respond to email. I tell you, I email, I got the address book, and I email the people them. I email all the African missions that are attached to the African Union in Addis Ababa. I, I email. Maybe 44, 45 different email addresses and 37 of them bounced. They weren't good. 37. 37 email addresses for missions. So sometimes you wonder. 
and even the one in 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 New York very very rarely I can get you and talk to somebody so yeah it, it it's 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 not easy but me not give up so me a drive go 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 New York me a drop it off there then me a drive go Washington DC and me a drop it off at drop a copy to every African consulate or high commission that's in Washington DC because it's literally saying all we're asking for is the right to come home we not ask at least we not ask for land I not ask for nothing. I not ask for people to vote. I not ask for people to run in a government. None of them something that we just want to return. I want to be able to come home more and more and be able to buy some property if, me, if me, I can afford it and operate a business. That's all we are asking for. That's all we're asking for. So I'm going to put the link to the petition. So it's credea.com slash repatriation so i would ask if you can share it sign it greatly greatly appreciated because yeah that's all we need we're, we're, we're i would love to be able to go with five thousand signatures and i didn't realize that um it would be so hard to get signatures I thought it would have been an easy, easy thing. People would have just signed, but man, I, I don't understand. So I just posted the link. I'm testing the link right now. It's working. It goes right to the petition. It says sign the petition. You can click to sign and you're good to go. So please share as much as you can. Very much appreciated. Anyway, if nobody else have any... Yeah, because listen, man. If I, I I don't know if anybody else noticed, it doesn't matter what country, where we are in the world, we are we are treated less than. It, it no matter how successful and rich the country is, we are treated less than, and and um, nationalism amongst Europeans are is it's growing in every country. Every one of their countries is growing. And when, when that starts happening, who do you think gets picked on first? We. So I'm telling people, keep that second passport if you have it, eh? Do not give up your, your, your passport of origin. Keep it if you have it. And try, and if you if you call it, I mean, Sierra Leone right now is the only country that's given a passport based on, based on um, um, DNA, ancestry. If you have that DNA, Pay the, pay the I think it's like three thousand dollars for the tour. Pay it and go get your passport. Definitely go because you you think Europeans are not having three four passports. You know many Europeans are citizens of Barbados, Saint Kitts and Nevis. Um, which other one is it? Turks and Caicos. There's another Caribbean island that's selling their passports. Even even Monaco, which is part of Europe, selling their passports. You think people are not buying passports? I, I, trust me, people are buying passports. So if you can, if you're entitled to a second passport, keep it because you never know. You never know. Anyway, people, thank you so much. Very much appreciate your time this evening. Again, as soon as my 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 DNA results come in, I will definitely definitely share them with everybody. And um, when I'm in Kenya, definitely I will know because I'll be posting for sure, for sure. All right. Yeah, man, keep the link. One love and please share and sign the petition. All right, man. Thank you and have a good night.